brought to you by Sunbeam, the best electric appliances made. Announcing new, the all-new Sunbeam Dual Deluxe Vacuum Cleaner, America's newest, most powerful home cleaner to give you the best on-the-floor cleaning and above-the-floor cleaning. Now, let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. happy to have on What's My Line for the first time one of the finest voices and one of the finest actors of the Metropolitan Opera, Mr. Jerome Hines. And I would like to introduce the most beautiful blonde to ever come out of Orlando, Florida, Arlene Francis. A gentleman who adds to the enjoyment of millions of papers across the country, anyway, millions of readers across the country in Surfboard in This Week magazine, Mr. Bennett Surf. And without further ado, our distinguished panel moderator, John Charles Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line. And Mr. Hines, it's very nice to have a distinguished artist from the Metropolitan Opera with us. Just hope after the half hour is over, you'll still have a voice left. I hope so. If his voice goes, he can always play basketball. <laughs> if his voice goes, he certainly can play basketball. We will, of course, do our best to frustrate the panel. We will also have, as a part of this exercise in frustration, a famous mystery guest a little bit later in the show. And we'll meet our first challenger after this word. And now let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? John? <laughs> Daly? <laughs> Well, Mr. Daly, there have been a lot of dailies, and it would probably take much too long. Otherwise, I'd trace our genealogical backgrounds, and we're probably cousins. That'd be very interesting. So together, let's go to work on the panel. Fine. Where are you from, sir? Wheat Ridge, Colorado. Big pardon? Wheat Ridge, Colorado. Wheat Ridge, yes, uh -huh. Colorado. It's a suburb of Denver. Suburb of Denver. Yes. Fine. May I present the panel, Mr. Daly? <laughs> Would you join me over here, cousin? And uh, do you know how we keep score? Yes. Fine. If you know how we keep score, let's let the folks who come to the theater and those who are watching at home know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, we can tell you that Mr. Daly is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Well, Mr. Daly, since the name is the same, do you have anything whatsoever to do with communications in any way? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. I'm a little dazed. Seeing one daily is bad enough. <laughs> Mr. Daly... Uh, but imagine what it would be like if you had to see them daily. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. John Daly, uh, is there a product involved in your machinations? No, there isn't. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Daly, do you by any chance work for a non-profit making organization? Yes. Um... <laughs> uh, is it some branch of some government? Yes. Is it the federal government? Yes. Um, do you have anything to do with money? No. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Hines. Now, there's one thing I would like to say here with your permission. In some degree or another, all of us have something to do with money. And, and I don't want Dorothy to be misled by this reply. I mean, there's money involved, you know, in, in the simple business of buying a handkerchief. Of course. If you want okay. to know what I had in mind, I'll tell you, John. No, let's let's let the sleeping dog sleep or something, Mr. Hines. Everything to do with the armed forces. 
No. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Would we be correct in ruling out the income tax department as long as we're ruling out money? Because I don't think of them as part. <laughs> They're one and the same thing to me. Do you have anything to do with the Income Tax Bureau? Yes. And that has nothing to do with money? They have something to do with my money. Uh, <laughs> uh, are you an investigator? Yes. Are you after me? <laughs> <laughs> You know, when I've got the family around, we don't horse around. We throw all the cards <laughs> over. But I must say, I think we investigators, right? Actually, Mr. Daly is a, a U.S. income tax examiner, and I believe you supervise the audit and examination service in your particular area. Of the yes, that's area. right. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, actually, you see, this is where sometimes answers get difficult because yeah. really, Mr. Daly... This he doesn't me, take the money himself. That, no. He doesn't. He never sees money per se. <laughs> he merely makes sure that uh, some of it gets paid in, you know. Uh, well, I'm glad to find a member of the family in, in the Income Tax Bureau. And for not venal purposes, please, don't... <laughs> now, I would like to say this, because I, I think that the Internal Revenue Bureau comes in for a lot of uh, good-natured raillery, and uh, I'm as guilty of it as anybody else. But it's been my experience, sir, that the gentlemen in your service are unfailingly fair and courteous. And I think you've got a fine service, and they get, a, uh, I'm sure, a vote from the American people. In fact, we'd like to have one here if we could You'll get, get one. You'll get quite a lot of mail from the American people, John. <laughs> John, this is going to get you nowhere. <laughs> well, now, unless I move to Colorado, you know, and I prove that we're cousins at least three or four generations apart or something like that, I guess there's nothing to get me except the feeling that it's nice to have had you on What's My Line. I'm sorry we didn't give them more trouble. Mm, it's been a pleasure. Good to have you with me. <laughs> A brilliant beginning panel. Now let's see what we can do with our second challenger. Would you come in and sign in, please? Right there. Oliver? Yes. Oliver Leith. Is that right, sir? Yes, sir. Right. Yes. Where are you from, sir? I'm from Shropshire in England. Shropshire in England. Now, with your permission, this is very, very modest of you. Uh, this is General Sir Oliver Lees, and a great many Americans who knew the North African and the Sicilian and the Italian and subsequently the major campaigns in Europe will remember him as one of the great British commanders during World War II, and it's a great honor. <laughs> Sir Oliver, may I present our distinguished panel, whom we will now demolish with your present occupation. Will you come with me, please, sir? Do you know how we keep score, Sir Oliver? Yes, I do. Fine. In that event, let's let folks here and those at home know exactly what your line is now. <laughs> now, panel, I think it's only fair you should know, among the other fine attributes that uh, General Sir Oliver had when he was with us during the war. He is a man who has always been very fond of Americans and gets along with them well. Now, I've told him not to get along with the four of you. <laughs> so we will tell you that Sir Oliver is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Sir Oliver, uh, is your occupation something that is an occupation in the United States as well as in England? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, is there a product involved in what you do? Yes. Is it useful rather than purely a luxury? No. That's one down and nine to go, <laughs> Mr. Hyde. Could I find this product in my home? Yes. Uh, would I find it in any particular room, more especially than any other room? Yes, I think you would. Now uh, this, Jerry, so you're not misled, this is perfectly true. You would be more likely to find it in specified areas of the house as a matter of your own discretion. The, the indication would be that you would use it in one location, preference to another. Is this product portable? Yes. Uh, would I be likely to be seen carrying it down the street? Yes, I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, let me have a small conference. <laughs> yes, I suppose you yeah. Yes, that's true. Uh, 
The answer is yes, but again, uh, with Sir Oliver's permission, so you're not misled. More likely than not, it would be uh, covered, and in such a, ca a case, it would not be readily recognizable, but it could, it's possible that you could carry it uncovered if you were going a short distance. Mm. And it's, it is uh, generally covered when it's in the house, too? No this, no, this is only if you had been walking down the street, it would be likely uh, that it was wrapped, you know, rather than unwrapped. And if you've carried it, you would be carrying it uh, not as an article of clothing, then. Is that right? Well, that's a pretty good hunk. You wouldn't carry it wrapped, by the way. That's a pretty good hunk. <laughs> All right. Um, would I find it in the kitchen? Uh, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't hear. Would I find it in the kitchen? In the yes, house? you might. Would I use it in the kitchen? Unlikely to. <laughs> I mean, no. I think we have to say unlikely to and give you a no on that. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Is this product uh, found out of doors? Yes. Is it anything that might be found in the ground? Yes. Is it anything that you might mine for? That you might what for? Might have to go underground no. for or in the waters no, no. or anything? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, Sir Oliver, this thing then grows, does it? Yes. Is it uh, edible in any form? In exceptional cases. Uh, <laughs> would you lean more than to horticulture than agriculture? Yes. Have you something to do with flowers? Yes. Uh, is it a particular kind of uh, flower or tree or yes. plant? Yes. We have to get the particular kind? Mm -hmm. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, more... Uh, is it a tree or a bush? Mm, yes, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes? Uh, does this bush or tree carry any uh, edible things on it? Does it grow anything like fruit or nuts that might be eaten? Sometimes. <laughs> Well, are you more or less than generally concerned with the whole class of, uh, of uh, things that grow in this fashion, rather than one particular brand or, or variety? I'm sorry, I didn't really hear the start. Don't let him ask it again. <laughs> Four down and six to go. The answer to that one is no. <laughs> Sir Oliver is concerned with one brand, Miss Kilgallen. Sir Oliver, are, are there any flowers on this plant or bush or whatever it is? Sometimes. Uh, in season? <laughs> <laughs> well, flowers are almost always sometimes, aren't they, in season? Uh, would it ever be a flower that would be worn by a lady and it would be not unnatural or unusual? Unusual. It would be it would. unusual. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Hyde. But this is basically more for beautiful purposes rather than to be eaten. And uh, is it growing a pot in the house? If you yes. Have one? Is it ordinarily bought in a pot? Is there any what? Is it ordinarily bought in a pot? Is it ordinarily <laughs> bought in a pot? So, um, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> now you can understand how it is that Sir Oliver came to command armies, can't you? <laughs> is this plant found especially in Africa? No. No. Six down and four to oh, go, Miss Francis. Oh, it's not sometimes. No, sometimes. What a relief. <laughs> is this a, uh, a plant that is green the year round? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Usually. <laughs> and you say it does bear a berry or a nut or sometimes. something? Sometimes. <laughs> Do we think of this plant for a special season of the year? No. no. Seven down, three to go, Mr. Mm -hmm. Sir. Well, I'm going to get down to the uh, thing that grows on it. Is it, is, is, it an, in the, is the thing that grows on the plant in the nut family? No. <laughs> that makes it I didn't mean that personally, Jeff. <laughs> Eight down and two to go, Mr. Kilgallen. Well, does it bear a flower sometimes? Yes, sometimes. All right. <laughs> uh, would you be considered eccentric 
if you had this flower in a window box? I didn't would you, you would you be considered eccentric if you had this flower in a window box? Oh no. Oh, no. Well I meant no, 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 you no, would no, not no. be considered. You know for no, 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 no. <laughs> Mind down, one to go, Mr. Hines. You only have one more question. Did you have a conference? You may have thirty mm. seconds for a question. I must have a bear that hasn't yeah, got a nut. Holly or... oh, can no, it Holly just have Christmas. a flower? Hmm? Couldn't it just have a flower? Well, no, because sometimes it has a berry. <laughs> or, or well, maybe he can edible. Edible. Oh, something edible. Mm -hmm. well, I, he doesn't suggest edible you eat soon. it, but he thinks, well, to a sometime kind of person, I guess. Um, maybe it has a cone of some kind. And maybe he considers buds berries oh, before they become flowers. I wouldn't need a pine cone, no. You wouldn't have that in a... In a in Would color right, help us? The 30 seconds well, is up. Green. I'm sorry. But, is it but the flower. Oh, the flower. Mr. Hyde. Oh, don't give this to me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's something weird, like a yucca. Miss or... Francis. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Is it over? Something Everything? No. <laughs> Mr. Hyde, there's one more question. Let's just oh, yeah. take a vote. What should we guess at? Yours is as good as mine. Better, just much better. Peanut. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. This is the longest 30 seconds I've ever <laughs> seen. But... Something that isn't eccentric, like what are those things? Yes, geranium. you can have 30 yeah. seconds more for a conference. I know okay. what I'm like. We've got, go ahead. Geranium. Geranium? Yeah. Did you just pull that out of the air what like the that? <laughs> Did you just pull it well, right out of the air like that? She was looking Wonderful. The answer is no. It's a rubber Sir Oliver raises cactus, friends. You were close. Oh. <laughs> May I ask a question? I. Why? Oh, <laughs> this, you know, I was, of course, it is, we forget, I think, sometimes, how the given meat? the British people are to keeping anything green in the house. They're, oh, yes. they're much more for fascinated by plant life than we are, and Sir Oliver has a, a nursery which raises cactus plants and he sells them all over Great Britain. Good. What for is you. It? <laughs> so, Who eats cactus? Uh, cactus? Cows. And actually, if you're on the desert and uh, in, ex in extremis, if you cut a cactus and eat its have pulp, you'll get moisture out of it and you'll Boy, survive. I'd have to be in a lot of extremists. Well, but you, <laughs> <laughs> you weren't listening. Sir Oliver said that it, would, it was a rare thing, but it mm. could be done. There's a big farm not very far down from San Diego where they got about six or eight acres entirely with these apuncha trees growing fruit, which they sell in the markets. Uh-huh. <laughs> and they're very bad to sit on. That was my sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sir Oliver, we had a wonderful time with your visit, and thank you for honoring us by coming. <laughs> We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger. And as you all know, on this occasion, my friends on the panel blindfold themselves. Blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, John. Yes. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> panel, as you know, in the case of the Mystery Challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with... Bennett, sir. <laughs> <coughs> Was your life in any way affected by the recently settled strike in Hollywood? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Miss Kilgallen? Uh, are you a motion picture actress? No. <laughs> <laughs> The question was, are you a motion picture actress? It's up for grabs. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Hines. Are you a motion picture actor? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Miss <sorry>. Francis? <laughs> Were you uh, uh, associated in any way that was glorious in the Academy Awards? Uh-oh. <laughs> yes. Mr. Sir? Have you ever done a picture with Marilyn Monroe? Oh, I did add it, yes. Golly, I'm nowhere. Uh, I, I passed to Jerry. I can't think of who passed Yeah, Jerry's just up. passing on to Arlene. <laughs> Go on. Oh, 
Well, I think Bennett knows. Uh, uh, Bennett, do you? I would. Do I you would think guess it's Tony Curtis. Oh, I was thinking. There's a man here to do a play, uh, Face of the Hero, uh, by the name of Jack Lemmon, who is in. Uh, oh, Jack Lemmon. <laughs> Arlene, I just wish you'd pass to Bennett. I'd just like to have heard Bennett say forthrightly, it's Tony Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> you were imitating him. <laughs> well, oh, Jack... Bob Hope made such a funny joke about you at the awards that oh, I'm yes. still laughing about yeah. it. You want to tell it? In case uh, there were some people that didn't see it? You tell it. I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, let me set the stage here. Jack was a nominee for an Oscar because of his fine work in Some Life of Hot. With, with Marilyn Monroe. What's the joke this time? Well, I, I may not have the words right now. I don't think I ought to do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's ever stopped you before. Anyway, Jack played play. <laughs> <laughs> The Jets have. Uh, uh, Bob said that Jack Lemmon uh, had been nominated because of playing a girl in the Marilyn Monroe picture, Some Like It Hot. And this was something that formerly he'd been arrested for. <laughs> I was terribly disturbed because I didn't think anybody knew. <laughs> I oh, thought it was Jack. adorable because it was you, Jack. <laughs> it was a fine picture. There's a lot of fun in it. Thank you for being our guest. I'm sorry we didn't give him more. And anyway, I also think he ought to have had a special award because I do think he gave one of the best performances of comedy I ever did. I must admit to something. I don't know what Jack's plans were because, as I think everybody knows, I don't have a chance to see our, our big surprise guest simply because they arrive after the program has started. Mm -hmm. But when I heard all of the hoop and holler when Jack came out, I leaned over and said to him, get your voice up as high as you can. We, we can get them to think you're a girl. And it worked. Uh -huh. <laughs> it worked. It worked like a charm. He's a man, Jack Lemon is. <laughs> you're what a man, Lemon, huh? <laughs> And busy on a one-armed paper hanging. You've been, you've been on the Broadway stage, but... It I seems have. The to reason me... I'm here now is because next September, now that the strike, thank heaven, is over, I'm back on a picture, but next September I'm going to do a play called Face of a Hero. That, uh, and I'm now here with Sandy McKendrick, who is directing, and Robert L. Joseph, who is writing. And uh, we're casting and uh, changing, throwing out all the parts. And uh, that's why I'm here now. Well, does memory serve me right? You have not been on Broadway. Not for eight years. Last for time was a uh, revival of room service. I shut up the 46th Street Theater in about two acts. Oh, very good. <laughs> very good. That's something that of a record, you know. You shut up a whole theater in two acts. With that's a hot right. water bag on your head. Yeah? That did it. That uh, did it. Well, Jack, I saw that play. I, I couldn't hear you, Jack, but I, did you say the name of that play? That room, sir, revival room Service. Room Service, that's right. Yeah. Well, that was 81 or two, 51. I think. Around First there. time I ever saw you was Love at First Sight. Thank you. <laughs> For all the audience. Well, good luck in September. And Thank you, sir. Uh, may the Broadway stage have the benefits of your fine talents and uh, be served as well as you've served the, the movie industry. And I know it nice will be. Compliment. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Good to have you with us. Sir. In balance, I have to admit you've done very well, panel. So uh, that's all I can say. We'll be back after this word from an alternate sponsor. And Miss Dorothy Kilgallen, good night. Good night, Mr. John Daly, the original. And good night, Jerry. Come again, and we'll make some more passes. All right. <laughs> and uh, good night, Arlene, and I'll see you in Orlando sometime. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> and happy trip to you. And good night, dear Bennett. Good night, John. Take care of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> At all times. Why that? Always. <laughs> now I'm getting worried. Jerry Hines, it's been wonderful having you with us. And I might say, we've had a great night. We've had a very great artist from the Metropolitan and a very great commander from the British Army. And uh, hooray for what's my line and thanks you for being with it tonight. Good night. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. This is Hal Sims speaking.